Hey everybody, my name is Leafies, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be seeing if a Minecraft player or me can survive in a super flat world, the nether dimension, end dimension, ocean world, and void world. And how will that go? Is it possible? How will we do it? Now, to classify survival, I have two different criteria. One, have a shelter. Two, have a somewhat stable or reliable, at least, food source. This shouldn't be too hard in most of them, but who really knows? So we're going to see how this one goes. If you do enjoy, then consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing. It would really mean the world to me. We're really close to 30k, so I would really appreciate it if you did subscribe. However, thank you so much for watching, and let's get right into the video, starting off with Super Flat. So, starting things off a bit easy, I'm sure you all can expect that yes, a super flat world shouldn't be that hard to start off. So I started a new world, made it super flat, and saw how long I could progress and could I achieve the necessary requirements. Obviously, as you may have expected, the answer was yes. I quickly find myself scouring for a village, and I got some animals along the way as food, but it didn't take much time after setting up my render distance to find a village nearby. I settled in that village and took residents in some of the homes, stealing their wood and killing their cows for more food. I then chopped down a few trees, which now spawn naturally with villagers, making it very easy to get saplings and overall a great source of wood and charcoal by association. Afterward, I mined the buildings once again for some stone, as it is not naturally generated in flat worlds, and then used a stone to make a furnace and stone tools to fend off the massive hordes of slime. Obviously, I couldn't fend for myself as the iron golems were dying, however, I was able to make shelter quite quickly and take residence in one of the villagers' houses, and now I have shelter one of the requirements. I decided to wait for the night to spawn to get wheat from skeletons by killing them for bone meal and then breeding cows together for stable food. In the meanwhile, though, I just killed animals and killed cows, as that is also a reliable food source. Hunting and gathering works perfectly fine and you can just kill animals and then smelt them with the charcoal from the infinite tree supply you have. Plus, the villagers have their own farms, so food should not be a problem in super flat. So that concluded, all the super flat variants are very easy to survive in because they do come with trees, wood, cobblestone, crafting tables, and all the necessities for a survival world. So crossing that one off the list, even with free beds, super flat, survivable, easy. The next one, the nether. This one was going to be much harder than I expected, and it led to me dying more than a few times. So here's how this one went down. I started off a normal world, pretty confident in myself because of how well the super flat went, and hopped into the nether portal, ready to be greeted by easy access to food, shelter, and everything needed to make a good society. However, little did I know that I had almost no hope of surviving in the nether without proper knowledge of how the nether works. The nether is a brutal place, and even with the new update, which is why I chose to shoot this video now, it is now possible to survive in the nether, but it is very very, very far from easy. I started off in a red forest by a nether fortress and began chopping down the trees but was soon greeted by a very mean piglin monster. I don't know what the names of the piglin beasts are versus the hoglins, I don't know what a hoglin is, so I'm just going to call them all piglins, piglin beasts, I'll just call them beasts, and the pig zombie pigmen ripoffs are piglins, okay? There we go. I was mad, barely able to get a crafting table before being chased off by one of the beasts, and then I ran to the nether fortress as cover, however that didn't help either because I was soon swarmed by piglins, which led to my inevitable death. After I hid in the nether fortress, I decided to kill myself because this one wasn't going anywhere. The next attempt went a bit better. I scouted the nether fortress a bit more and was able to find diamonds, crafting a diamond sword to defend myself from the monsters. However, this one didn't last very long either because while trying to survive, I, re I really quickly realized I had no chance for food. There is no food in the nether that you can easily access, because nether ward is useless, and apparently I don't know enough about the nether update to realize if there are any crops that you can grow in this harsh environment, because the only thing I could come up with was mushroom soup. Mushroom soup was actually a really good option because there is now wood in the nether, which is why it's possible to survive in the first place. However, to get mushroom soup, you have to go to the old nether biomes, thank you for being my saviors, to find red and brown mushrooms. These are actually not too uncommon, and you can find them pretty quickly throughout the biomes if you search hard enough. So I searched a little bit and got a few ma mushroom soups, which was good. However, I wasn't sure that it was good enough because I didn't have shelter and I was constantly on the run and have a threat from piglins and beasts and zombie pigmen in general if I accidentally hit them. Plus, another fortress was nowhere to stay because I got fireballed by a blaze and lost my diamond stuff. So, after deciding that I wanted to die because I missed a block clutch, I ended up trying to do without my previous items and just start a whole new life for myself. Not wanting to use any items from my previous one and making this as legit as possible, I decided to start anew, getting wood and prioritizing mushrooms and soup. After collecting a bit of soup, as well as sticks, a sword, and a crafting table, I began my journey back into the fortress. I was getting a bit more confident, and I killed a few piglins to avenge myself and get back at those who had wronged me, killing a bit more piglins than necessary just for the hell of it. Get it? Because hell of it? 
Ah. Uh, so I raided the fortress, and I explored it a bit. However, I only went back to chests that I've already looted, so I actually got no loot out of the whole experience, and just lost hunger along the way. Afterward, I gave up on trying to look at, live in the fortress, because that place is just super boring, and I decided to become a nomad. A nomad is someone who just walks around, so I just walked around looking for food and mushrooms along the way. I only found these weird sapling mushrooms, which I'm pretty sure are now saplings and grow the nether trees, but I couldn't get them to grow even once, so I just gave up on that thought. I went around killing as many beasts as possible, living off their pork, but then realizing that the mushroom soup is just way better, and the pork is a waste of my time. However, the piglin beasts are very, very easy to kill, because never one of them, never once did one of them hit me, which is really weird, but very welcome. So, after walking around forever, I decided to do some research on the nether because I knew that if I wanted to survive, I was going to have to make this work with me and the piglins. We had a bit of a choppy relationship to begin with, keep back and forth killing, not very nice, and they'd always shoot me when they see me, so it's not really fun to be next to them. So I decided I have to get gold armor. And instead of lo looting fortresses like a normal person, I decided to kill zombie pigmen. After doing some research on the Minecraft wiki, I actually learned that zombie pigmen do drop golden ingots. I was, I mean, I was pretty sure they did, but... I don't know, I forgot there was such a thing as a gold farm, so stop, leave me alone. After walking around without a purpose for ages, I somehow, I don't know how, I somehow came back to my original starting spot and was greeted by a very familiar sight, my portal, and surrounding it were a bunch of zombie pigmen. Luckily, there are very little piglins in sight, so I managed to kill a few zombie pigmen, getting some gold, which was very happy, and some golden ingot, gold nuggets along the way. After that, I just have to set up shelter because, of course, that was one of my two requirements. Shelter and a stable food source. My food source was already going to be mushrooms, and I discovered a valley by my new house, which I was making out of these uh, crimson wood, which it doesn't look very good, but it is a shelter. And I discovered that there was a little valley with a bunch of mushrooms, so I looted that a bunch. And then I decided to do something that no man in Minecraft has ever willingly done. I was going to start a zombie, zombie pigmen genocide. Now, zombie pigmen are known to be super annoying to hit, and you should never ever hit them in the nether. But I've already done it before, and they're pretty easy to kill, so I decided to set base in my new house, and bam, just straight up farm zombie pigmen. I was gonna hit them, then run into my house, and then block up my doors, and then kill them, and then loot the gold, and maybe get gold armor, because if you didn't know, if you wear gold armor, the piglins won't be mad at you. The goal was 36 golden nuggets, because that's how much you need to craft boots, and once I have gold boots on, I can live in peace with the piglins, and then I don't have to have any pigmen anymore, then I can just focus on food, and I already have shelter, so I survive. Perfect. However, there was one fatal flaw in my plan, and that was ghasts. Now, ghasts are not too difficult to deal with, and while exploring in the nether, I actually got the return to sender achievement on the very first time I had a fireball back at a ghast in this world, which was pretty fun. However, there was one thing that would really screw me over, Ghast explosions. Now, ghast fireballs actually block the ground next to your house, or in the nether in general, and next to my house, a ghast fireball hit, and it blew up a hole into my basement. Well, what does that mean? After I was done clearing the first wave of zombie pigmen genocide, I actually got a few bits of gold, which was very, really good, and I was very happy with that. However, there was one stupid thing that happened after I finished killing the zombie pigmen. I just finished getting the gold, and then I went back inside to enjoy my riches, and then bam, out of my basement comes a piglin. How did he get in there? I have no idea. Did they spawn in there? I have no idea. But he killed me. And worst of all, he took my gold. I don't even know how this is possible. I don't know if this is a feature in the game, because I certainly have never heard of it. But this piglin took my gold. He literally killed me, then stole my golden ingots, which were never to be found again, and I'm pretty sure he replaced them with four netherite, nether brick ingots, which was super annoying. However, that was pretty much the end of that life, and I decided to continue with it, pretending I'd never died, because I feel like I was doing pretty good. And after doing three more waves of zombie pigmen genocide, I eventually reached the 36 golden ingot threshold, patched up my basement with some shroom lights, and the whole thing felt much better. Also, I learned that zombie, uh, that piglins can open doors, which is very scary. So keep that in mind next time making a house in the nether. However, because I did actually manage to defend myself from the ghasts, piglins, and by getting golden armor, golden armor and a successful mushroom soup I strategy, which is just walking around looking for mushrooms, I would consider this one a success, as I have enough forest to last me a lifetime, and I'm pretty sure I count this as survival. Number three was the end, and as, may, as many of you may have guessed, it is actually impossible to survive in the end. However, it is not impossible to survive in the end city. The end city is a whole different variant of the end that you unlock after killing the ender dragon. So after maybe cheating my way through that first part, I ended up in the end city, where I was very happily greeted by 
shulkers and the shulker city that I found well let's just say it was absolutely useless so I had to find a new one because there were no chests throughout the whole city and I wasted my life looking there this one wasn't actually that interesting because there's only so much you can do there is a very stable food source which is of course chorus plants so you can easily replant those as I did so that's easy food renewable boom bam done however there is also the issue of shelter which obviously you can take residence in the lovely cities constructed for you i did get my gear from a few of the chests and i was able to kill off the shulkers and endermen that posed a threat for that area of the region so easy and completed nothing much to say on this one definitely survivable in the end city however i wouldn't recommend it because you have no wood and it's really boring dimension slash world number four was the ocean world and i'd never played ocean world so i never really knew what to expect and it was very, very interesting to say the least. So I booted up in Ocean World, and right away was really what you would expect. Straight up ocean. No land throughout the entire world, or so I'd assume. I never saw any. However, while swimming for a bit, I did notice a piece of sunken land with some wood and drowns, which was really nice. However, after getting impaled and then drowning trying to break the blocks of wood, I realized that this was not going to work, and I had spent way too much time on trying to survive down here. The ocean world is actually a very difficult place to survive, and I do challenge you guys to see if you can survive, because it is much harder than I expected, and I could not mine any wood from this sunken piece of land without being tried and killed, drowned, or drowned, I guess. Two different things. So, afterwards, I then remembered, wait, this isn't hopeless after all. There's such thing as a shipwreck, and I found a shipwreck by going north about a hundred blocks. So luckily for me, the shipwreck was, in fact, useless. There were no items that could possibly help me. However, there was a lot of wood that was near the surface. So what I did was I mined wood, and then because I was so deep in the ocean floor, I just died. Swam back to that location because it was only a hundred blocks away. Got the wood, mined another piece of wood died and then decided to mine logs like a smart person died and then finally crafted a crafting table and some doors and began living in the shipwreck this actually went much smoother once i actually managed to get a base because i was able to find a stone axe in the chest of the shipwreck and that was pretty much the only useful thing throughout the entire mission i decided that i could make my living fishing however i didn't really have any string and i didn't know how to get it so i ended up not doing that and just going for the old fashioned way of killing your fish by hand. I spent a lot of my time clearing out the water in the shipwreck because I wanted to make it at least a nice shelter. So I ended up making, I mean, I think quite a nice home. I have some iron that will probably never help me ever, but I did start a mine and to my surprise, there was actually cobblestone or stone underneath the sand of the world. So that was really helpful and I was able to get stone tools and progress quite nicely. I think if I had the energy to farm around fish in my boat, I think this would be totally survivable and very feasible in an ocean world. I thought this one was the funnest because I love the cozy feeling of being the shipwreck while the world around you is flooded. It's just a really cool feeling, and this one went pretty well. And there was one final one, which did not go so well. The final one, Void World. Void World, as you might expect, does not provide any support to you whatsoever. It's just a cobblestone platform in the middle of air, you're hopeless. I was gonna try to get to a village by farming off the drops of zombies, so I was like, hmm, maybe, or no, mobs in general, hmm, maybe there is one certain mob that will drop what I need, but I, I think, I'm pretty sure, no mobs will drop blocks, or stuff that can be crafted into blocks without a crafting table, I mean, I know bone blocks exist, but you need a crafting table, and I think that's bone meal anyway, I, I don't know. However, I then realized that no mobs could spawn because the area was too small for mobs to spawn. So that was a complete waste of my time and a complete waste of your time. However, I do challenge you guys to this challenge. I, I, I do challenge you guys to this challenge to see if you could survive in a void world. If you have any idea at all on how to survive in a void world, my goal is to get to a village somehow, as I said before. So maybe you guys can have an idea of how to get to there. So if you do, let me know in the comment section. I'd really, really be curious to see if there is a possible way to survive in the void world, but I cannot think of a single one. However, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. These are the different ways to survive in the different dimensions. I do hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Consider subscribing if you did enjoy, and peace out. Sorry if my voice was so weird today. I have a cold. Bye.